Hello and welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Today we're going to be going over a really interesting Benris that was manufactured in the 1950s. The key with this specific watch is the fact that the case design of this specific piece is extremely unique. Um, match that with a really interesting dial and that's exactly what the watch is that we're going to be talking about in today's video. So I'm really excited to jump into this piece. I will say that researching this specific watch has been a challenge. Um, not a lot of documented history about this piece is available, but if you do know more information about this piece, please let me know in the comment section below because I would love to either create a follow-up video or um, update my the article that we write about this piece. So let me know in the comment section below if you do know anything about this piece. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoy um, at least some of the stuff that we talk about um, in this video and uh, light in that you enjoy seeing this piece in the flesh. So without further ado, let's get in. Creativity in case design has been an extremely popular trend in collecting over the last 12 months. Although there are many collectors that collect watches exclusively with cases that do not fit the norm of case design. The one, one of the eras of extreme creativity in case design was the 1950s. Although the 60s and 70s also had designers pushing the boundaries. Today, this could be really be equated to some of the independent watchmakers who are reimagining watch cases and those who come to mind are people like Zeitwerk and MBNF. Benrus was a brand that pushed the boundaries of traditional cases, uh, case design in the 1950s. Benrus was founded in 1921 in New York by Benjamin Lazarus and his two brothers, and it took its name from the first syllable of his name and the last syllable of the family name. The three young men combined 5,000 US dollars in savings and started importing wa Swiss watch movements and casing them in New York City. They headquartered the fledging company in the iconic Hippodrome building, nestled in the jewelry district <clears throat> and what is known to still be the heart of the city. Today, the company's headquarters remain in the same location. While the headquarters remain the same, Venice does substantially does substantial amount of manufacturing in Switzerland. Benris owns a factory in La Chautefonds, where watch movements are assembled. This was the first major Swiss company that was also run by a woman. So another really interesting fact about the company. Throughout its history, they produced significantly historic um, watches like the Airman watch with its cut corner case, their Art Deco style full calendar watches, and the Sky Chief. The company was extremely involved in World War II, which led to a huge amount of growth for the company, as it did for many companies who were involved during this time period. Benrus manufactured watches for servicemen and also worked closely with the USA military to produce timing devices to use for use in bombs and weapons. The Benrus covered Today is a time-only piece with a really beautiful honeycomb dial that you see in front of you. Although some research has documented a line about historical Benrus watches, there is sparse information about this particular piece, which makes researching it a little bit of a challenge. This Benrus was manufactured in the 1950s. It can be dated to that time period purely because the movement that is inside of this watch was used during this time. The watch has a 10 karat gold filled case that is 32 millimeters in diameter the case stands out really because of its lug design the watch features these hooded lugs that twist seamlessly into the brown leather strap that the watch is on as mentioned the watch has a really beautiful honeycomb dial that has developed a really warm hue over time it has gold applied hour markers and signed with bender's name as mentioned, the watch features its original crystal, and you can kind of see some of these scratches on the crystal itself. And the watch runs on the caliber DN21 movement, which is based on the ETA 1280 movement. The watch really has an incredible presence on the wrist. Even the way the lugs sit on the wrist leads to an interesting experience for the wearer. 
it's also really eye-catching. It's not your typical shape um, that watches uh, typically have. And so when you see this on, on the wrist, it really um, draws one's eyes to, towards it. With a closer look, after being stunned by the overall case, you get drawn to the honeycomb dial. The honeycomb dial, honeycomb dials were extremely popular in the 1950s, and it's basically a technique whereby a pattern is applied to the dial using machinery, often referred to as tapisserie ante literam. This dial pattern can also be seen on many other vintage watches, including vintage Omegas and vintage Rolex Explorers. If you look at it, look at the watch on the wrist, you can see that at 32 millimeters, it is going to sit, you know, on the smaller side. However, um, the lugs really flare out nicely and make it look a little bit larger on the wrist. As you can see, it has a stainless steel case back, and as I mentioned, it's it's um, gold filling. It's a gold filled case, so um, you will see. That it has, or it has a different presence as opposed to being something like a solid gold piece. Um, what's really interesting about this piece, and I, I really have enjoyed um, interacting with this piece, is because um, I apologize for the focus here. Let me get this back. Um, twofold, right? There's two things that I think are really interesting about this piece. The first thing is obviously the case design. I don't think I've actually seen a watch with this type of case design before, but leave a comment in the section in the comment section below if you do know of some other watches that have these a similar sort of design to the lugs. The second thing that I really love about this watch is the dial. We've been able to cover a lot of different watches on the channel uh, with interesting dial finishings. For example, we covered a Longines a little while back that had a really beautiful guilloche dial and diamond hour markers. These subtle differences, like this honeycomb dial, a guilloche dial, or even the um, linen finished Tudor Oyster Date that we covered um, last week, are different ways that you can enjoy um, and experience watches that um, are just a subtly different. Um, but allow you the wear to kind of experience things in a, in a different way when it comes to wearing these specific watches. And I think that kind of those differences really are what set these watches apart. Watches tell stories by the way they look and the adventures that they go on. Although documented history on this particular reference from Benris is hard to find, what isn't hard is to wear the incre this incredible watch. The lugs and honeycomb dial make wearing this watch extremely exciting and such a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this incredibly beautiful Benrus with these really interesting, fancy, twisted lugs <clears throat> and um, honeycomb dial. It's such a unique piece. It's such a unique piece to wear on the wrist because, as I mentioned, these lugs make this watch sit really, really differently than just a classic round 32 millimeter piece. Um, quite an interesting sort of a design from Benris and obviously a, a really cool piece to um, to enjoy the wrist. Um, as I mentioned, I, I know that my research on this piece is um, somewhat sparse compared to some of the other videos that I've made. Um, this piece has been a challenge to research. Uh, I think a lot of the my research really focused on the movement because you could kind of go by time period, but again, it was challenging. So. Um, if you do know anything else about this piece, let me know in the comment section below because as I mentioned, I'd love to make a follow-up video or a follow-up article or just update the article that we write about this piece with more information. I have reached out to Benrus to see if they have any information about this specific piece. Um, we'll see if they come back to me, but I wanted to make sure I could cover this piece for you on the channel in a timely manner because we did tease it, obviously, in one of our previous videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you are new to Life on the Wrist, be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend who might be interested in watches. If you wouldn't mind liking this video, it really does help me out. Um, and as always, there will be an article on lifeonthewrist.com about this specific piece, so head over to our website if you want to check that out. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.